Hi guys, so today we have our favorite British trainer, Mr. Bushank, who currently resides in San Jose, California and is a dog trainer at Primal Canine. So today, him and his love, Mercy, will join us from California. Request has been sent. What's up, cats, nose, dogs? Hey! Uh, how's it going? How's it going? How are you? I'm good. How are you? Nice to see you. Yeah, a little bit of an eventful afternoon. <laughs> you all good? Yeah, I'm outside. I'm kind of locked out, but me and my dog are chilling, waiting for my housemate to come home with some house keys so I can get back in the house. Very nice. Are you with Mercy? Yep, she's right here. Hi, sweet girl. <laughs> How old is she? She uh, just turned three. She was three um, at the end of November. So, yeah, ah. still young. Getting on a little bit, I guess, but mm -hmm. still, still young, still puppy-ish. How old's Rika? Rika is now like about eleven months. Oh, long way to go. Still the shaping, mm -hmm. still shaping all new behaviors and stuff. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So before we go into um, your personal story and all of that, we have an urgent problem. Oh yeah. And need your help with. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh so Rika has been potty trained, you know, from the start, and we were always taking her outside for walks and it hasn't been a problem. Mm -hmm. Just recently we moved and she has been having accidents in the house. And she we have a backyard and um we're outside a lot, but I'm noticing she's like a little kid when she goes outside, like she's not peeing. Or, you know, she's not going to the bathroom and then she'll come inside and then go to the bathroom. Yeah. You gotta go back to basics. She okay. she learned potty training in their old environment and then you went somewhere new, right? Expecting her to have the same behavior. You went somewhere new. Gotta go back to basics for a little bit, back to solidifying what the crate means to her and coming out and working and engaging with you and then getting some of that freedom of running around in the potty area, maybe I think just out to go potty, engage with you. Placement command, decent bits of focus, you know, obedience, whatever you're working on at the time. And then maybe back in the crate, maybe reset to go back outside. You potty outside. You come inside, mm -hmm. do stuff when she's maybe earned some of that freedom of not pottying inside. Because it's not what you want. You know, you know she's got the behavior. You know, mm -hmm. you know not potty inside, but you change variables a little bit and she starts to be inside. Mm -hmm. I think she like now thinks that um, inside is where she's supposed to go. Like she has the place command, like I'll be down here working. She's just chilling on the bed. And then all of a sudden, like, I mean, I don't even really fully see it. Like then I'll see like hey. shit there. Yeah. And it's like she ran up there shit and then came back yeah. down. And it's like, yeah, I I'd, I'd, I'd maybe question like, her duration in place then? Are you using place as just a place to feel better that she's not in a crate engaging with you? Would she be better off inside a crate right now to just, you know, eliminate that behavior to stop her understanding that she can run off place and go and pee? If you're gonna put her on place, I'd just tether her to something just in case she does get off place and you can kind of figure out how many times she's getting off. If she's getting off consistently, you just gotta go back to basics with your place and solidify that. Place means place. You're on your boundary line. You've got your little bed. You're delineated from the, the ground. You know, you're not mm -hmm. to move from this. If she's mm -hmm. moved, probably, you know, self-reinforced herself a few times and got away with it. Mm -hmm. And I think um, that brings me to the next thing, like her place. Like now I have a lot of different places. Like right now. Oh, technically, yeah. Oh, she, yeah. Technically, she, she is in place right now, just chilling on the couch. But like her place is the little bed over here. But she kind of just. Well, you've used place as lots of different things. So she's associated with just going up and jumping on it. I'd go back to basics with that as well and solidify place means go to the place that I'm pointing to. And just you go back to basics with just it being a cot for the time being. Then move that cot in different places so you can send it to place where mm -hmm. that cot is different than it was the, the last session. Okay. Place is just go to that place and go and lie down. I'm not sure what your place is. Some people use place as just go up and stand on it, and then you get told a command after it. 
like sit mm -hmm. or down. I use places, you go to place and you go and lie down. Place means go and lie down. I don't tell you to lie down after I told you to go place. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so I, I usually use places, go and lay down. Cool. So, I mean, solidify, I think solidify it with a cot. Just go back to base. Mm -hmm. That place means this. Maybe get a, I mean, I use the same type of cots to do directionals, but... Okay. Leash pressure is going to help you as well, like stopping her from doing it, just to kind of reinforce that behavior. Like, nope, it's not that. And then go to the, the good one. Okay. Does that make um, sense? Yeah, it does make sense. Should I um, bring, be creating her more then? I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, as long as she's supervised, she can be out and be managed. But from what you said, like, you didn't, you didn't catch her kind of pottying, which makes me like kind of question sometimes maybe the mismanagement of her maybe being out too much yeah the freedom of going i need the bathroom i'm gonna go mm -hmm. can i take you outside to go mm -hmm. okay that. yeah just eliminate you know just change some of the variables a little bit and you know back to crate outside to pee that's where you do it and then when you get better at engaging outside you can play with the back like you normally would and when she's tired best place for her is back in the crate anyway okay all right, sounds good. Oh, I don't know what it is. I, sometimes I just feel. What? I didn't mean to cut you off. So I wasn't saying like to always create your dog, but just use it for what it is and cre creating value in your relationship. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, sometimes Mercy can come out of the crate and not give a fuck about me. Excuse my language. Shit. Uh, <laughs> And sometimes I can be like, I can't be bothered to deal with you right now. I've put her back in the crate for literally two minutes, gone to make a piece of toast, come back in, and she's opened the crate. I've opened the crate door, and she's been in completely engaged with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So eliminated some of the environment. Okay, you're not going to go and do that for the time being. You're going to go back in the crate for a second, come back out. Yay, now you're engaged. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really have to be more strict. Um, I, it's a me thing that I have to yeah. put her in the crate. Probably, for they use it a lot just to feel more comfortable that their dog's not in a crate but you lose mm -hmm. value like a place should be like where you turn around and engage with me to look for what else we do in more so mm -hmm. than go over there so i can ignore you for a little bit mm -hmm. yeah the other problem we're having is she can open all the doors here <laughs> the so, first I mean, time it happened yeah the yeah. first time it happened she broke into my brother's room and now my brother's locking the door so that <laughs> it doesn't happen. I mean, that's the first way, right? I mean, prevention is the first, first thing to think about. Mm -hmm. But really, it's about like the time out of the crate more so than the time in it. Mm -hmm. I'm out of the crate, valuable. They don't give a shit about going back in the crate ten minutes mm -hmm. after in for a little bit while you answer the phone and they come back out for engagement. You know, they enjoy going in just as much as they enjoy coming out. Ah, okay. That's a good way of looking at it. Like, it's like no big deal. Not this much. Really no big okay. deal. The way I look at it is like their bedroom. If you went mm -hmm. if you come from work and you only went and slept on the couch, all the things that like your phone and fire engine going past, or your car alarm or the doorbell go in, it'd kind of rustle you up, right? A couple of weeks, mm -hmm. whether that goes by, you get pretty pissed off and like mm -hmm. agitated. Now imagine that same scenario in your bedroom. None of that stuff would really, really register. You probably wouldn't even wake up to most of it. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. another problem that we're running into so there's also we also have a little rescue chihuahua and um the rescue chihuahua is about 13 years old oh. and kind of like this little like eight eight pound like little bowling ball monster. It, <laughs> yeah. monster total monster yeah. those chihuahuas um, they got some balls to them <laughs> Yeah. So he also like barks a lot, like anyone that comes in or, right. or um, sounds. And um, I mean, we lived in LA, right? It was really good about like, um, yeah, being yeah. neutral. And um, now that Tito's barking, she's kind of starting to be more vocal. Yeah, like the, the I mean, mimicry is a thing in dogs, but chances are it's not good behavior that they mimic. Dogs only learn shitty behaviors on other dogs, or dog parks. They don't come together and go, hi, let's learn to sit for a little bit. And never mm -hmm. right, they just learn shitty behaviors. So fortunately, Riker's is going to continue to pick up that behavior. It's all progressive. It's probably only going to get worse unless you, man you start managing, you know, the other little monster. So I mean, let's just go back to basics with that little dude. Just because he's old doesn't mean he can't learn new tricks. He really doesn't, you know? Make him work for his yeah. foot. You know, like give him some value. You don't have to start overnight and rip the band-aid off and go, okay, now you're working for this. But maybe 
walk around the room with his bowl. If he follows your ass, turn around and tell him, good boy, and walk off somewhere else. If he follows you, he's still hungry. Tell him, good boy, give him something else, right? Mm -hmm. Start maybe utilizing the bowl as like a counter conditioning that if he hears something come in and he barks, oh, here's the bowl, oh, yeah, and you go somewhere else. And just mm -hmm. maybe a better response from the whatever he's been aroused by. And Riker, theoretically, in that scenario, shouldn't really be out. I'd put her in a crate. If you're working with the other guy, Put Riker in a crate so you don't have to manage two dogs. Cause mm -hmm. get yeah. It. Yeah. We also, in the beginning, they, um, they were, they actually had like two little run ins. It when it had to do with the food. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So. Yeah. Set me in crate and rotate. You know what I mean? Teach the new lad the, the, the little, you know, uh, the little chihuahua that it's the same being. The as Riker, mm -hmm. they held us out accountable the same way. They, they might not be asked the same things, but it should be, they live in the same roof, the you know, same order, same food, essentially. They should be behaved around each other. It just takes a little bit of time to balance up the relationships individually. Individual sessions, short, fun ones, bring some value to you, more so than give it away in bowl. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And what should I do when um, Riker starts barking? Like if Tito's in a Re different room? Redirection for right now. I mean, I'm not sure like how solid her placement command is to maybe utilize that. But really, you want to condition a better response. You don't I mean obedience sometimes just masks the or suppresses the behavior. Ideally, you want to train a neutral response from whatever she's giving a shit about because she's only responding because the other little lad's going hippie as well. She's like, well, you are you. Most of the time, they don't even know what they're barking at. She's like, oh, you're doing it. Okay, I'll do it too. And then barking's yeah. fun. They like it in self-rewarding terms. They're going to keep doing it. It's only going to get yeah. either you correct Riker in a way that she understands in an educational way, like, hey, I don't really want you doing that anymore. And you give value to other behaviors after that fact. But really, individual sessions, try and set up a couple of sessions where someone's knocking on your door and you're just doing easy obedience sessions with Riker in your front, in your front living room or wherever you are make sure she's not reactive mm -hmm. to it on her own because then as soon as you mm -hmm. add sausage dog back into it or you know the chihuahua <laughs> he might start mm -hmm. the reactivity and you go okay now i've got to work so he while he's mm -hmm. being reactive where could you feed Riker? could you feed her in the kitchen if she knows he's being reactive will she not take food off you in the backyard in the back garden like where where's her threshold lie of when she's overstimulated does that make sense yeah yeah it does I think the big thing is like Tito needs to be trained. I think he's just like this, he, like this bad boy who yeah, thinks he runs the house. Yeah. yeah, they never get, they never really understand to self cope. Those little dogs, they get picked up mm -hmm. out of situations a lot, where they just go yip 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 yip, and they go ha 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 ha, and they just literally just go in ha. I got picked up, and they never know how to deal with it. Most of them, you take one step towards them, they have no clue what you're doing. Mm -hmm. They've been told no. You know, like right. with balance and structure, and they don't. Mm -hmm. them don't have it. So I just go back. Yeah. back I mean, try and build some value. Mm -hmm. Start in the house, short sessions, keep it fun, great training, mm -hmm. place. You know what I mean? All the fun things that we kind of do to help our dogs day to day life. Yes, definitely will do. And the other thing with Tito, I feel like um, because he's a a small dog, but b a rescue, I feel like he gets away with a lot of stuff because it's like, mm. oh, Tito's a rescue, you know. Yeah, like, the small dog. Can some shit. You know, small dog, you can understand just because, like, oh, they're small. Fuck it, they don't matter. I gotta, I gotta watch my fudge. I gotta start saying, full way. I, I gotta start saying fudge more so than. <laughs> um, <laughs> Poor dogs, they get away with stuff just because we know they don't really hurt. You know, if they bite you, you're like, ha ha, it's funny. You just yank them back on a leash. A kid can pull a little dog back. Uh, the mm -hmm. rescue, it stopped becoming a rescue the day you got it home. Stop. Well it's, said, yeah. Right? Uh, you would never introduce your child as an orphan. Right? Because right? you'd, you'd go, uh, we did that we go oh he's an orphan don't think about anything bad about his history but he's better now you just go here's my son yeah that's it, that's it. will you shut up <laughs> we don't spend that much time outside so there's somebody like, like down by the street that she thinks she can mess with <laughs> oh a little cutie but yeah like, um, like good to say like yes you've rescued your dog but 
it's a dog. It's a dog now. You know, we pity our, we pity the rescues more than we need to. They live in the moment. You know what I mean? Bring some value to his life. He'll come out of his shell, and you'll see the character of a little dog that you'll enjoy and be able to enjoy communicating with. Because right now the small dogs just yip, and you take them out and walks. They pull a lot. They mm -hmm. cat. Just do whatever they want. You know what I mean? They, we give them where yes. they, do. they can shit where they want. They yip and bite you, and we laugh about it. And Mm -hmm. Get more food. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, we got to put Tito to work. It's not like you got to put it work. Just <laughs> understand his lifestyle change. You know, just make, give some yeah. fun life and make it fun for him. And you know, he's thirteen. He's had a good innings. You know, he's mm -hmm. trying to bring some fun to his life. Yes, we'll do. And we'll keep you posted on that. Um, so we also we okay. So we have a lot of questions to go through. Oh really? We form. really do. Yes. A lot of questions. Okay, so a, lot, a lot of questions, and I know we're going to get questions on here. Oh, so like um, some of them are yeah. going to like questions back to the people, maybe. Huh? Like when you some of these questions, some of these questions might be questions back that I won't be able to answer without knowing a lot more fucking questions. Like your placement mm -hmm. command, what should we do? I don't know. Go back to basics. Like what is she doing here? What is she doing there? <laughs> Those these questions and queries that kind of really delve into the, why the answers are the answers they are. So some of them are going to be pretty blanket statement. Some of them mm -hmm. might be. Need it right now. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, my like, sarcastic, I'll try my best. I'll try my best to zip it as best I can. And and get a trainer is a great response. I mean, a lot of the times that's what solidifies it all. When you see people like, how do I correct this? How do I do this? How do I do that? I don't even know how you manage your dog. I don't even know where it sleeps. I don't, mm -hmm. do when, how do you reward it? I don't even know how you talk to it. How do you, what do you say when you reward your dog? What is it doing in the meantime? Like what issues is it like? There's so many questions and queries to really delve into dog's behaviors that you can't just give blanket statements. You know what I mean? How do I correct mm -hmm. the dog with the wrong? Mm -hmm. Right. Way well, more I, I can't tell you. Yeah? If I tell you one way and you do it that way, what if I cause reactivity? You know what I mean? You popping your dog at the wrong time. Mm -hmm. I don't want to deal with that because then it's my fault. Yeah. One thing that I really love about your profile, like on the first highlight, you have that PSA. Like if you message me and ask me a question, like flat out, that is kind of rude. Like, please, the, the better approach is, hi, hope you're yeah. doing well, you know, is kind of yeah. ease into it. So common though, that people think they can just get tips. You know what I mean? I haven't been doing this that long, so I'm still learning as well, but it's took me this long to know what I know, to just give away that willy-nilly. And that's not like being selfish, but people don't even say hello. Like, how, like, how do I get my dog to do that? Do what? Like, what part of you, what part of you seeing that last 15 seconds do you think I can teach you? The, the, my dog looking at me, my dog sitting, my dog doing a fucking orbit or whatever, whatever she's doing. I don't know what I can teach you. And then they just expect it. Sometimes if it's early in the morning, like they'll get a response like, with like an answer to saying patience or training or mm -hmm. and then some people get offended when I give them that response they're like oh okay I'm sorry sorry I asked mm -hmm. like you're sorry that you asked because I didn't give you free information to help you train your dog like come on now like, <laughs> manners go a long way with me if you're polite chances are I'll do a lot of things for you but mm -hmm. if you're not so let that be a PSA to everyone. Manners matter. Really do. And be yep. nice. And also um, realize that trainers are paid for their expertise working with dogs. So, and so all, all uh, the see you got to, you got to succeed with everybody's dogs. Nobody wants to go. Nobody wants to withhold information for, for you to not succeed. But you got to want to do it. Like just mm -hmm. get tips on a fucking person that you don't even know like right it's a lot all right we got okay. five questions <laughs> um okay first off um how did you get your nickname Hushang? No, God, i don't even know like that's people ask me it started as like Shawshank Redemption, but it was a word before that, and that turned into something else. Then the Redempt, the Bushank Redemption, Shawshank, oh, I don't know, it all molded into Bushank. And then because I was a bartender at the time, I had, I had like a, my own web page and it was like an ambigram that I had made and it just stuck. And then any type of handle <laughs> that I ever used or email address, I was like, what should I use? I don't want to use like Flare Boy 123 or <laughs> Dog Dude, you know what I mean? I don't know. 
I just use Boostyank. So anything I've ever used with a was because I, my bat my battery is twenty percent. Um, anything that I've ever used with a profile has always been Boostyank. So, uh, and then I found out that in well, German, we it. It, it apparently it means like a um, like exuberance. Like someone would say Boostyank, I'm like fuck, all right. <laughs> So, I mean, really, I don't really got, I haven't really got an answer, so I don't know. It's the quick one. It's not really bad. Well, well, we like it. It's a cool one. It could be a lot worse. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what led you to California? Um, I uh, moved here with a girl at the time. I was living in Vegas. Um, I lived in Redding for a little bit, and then I knew people in San Jose. I came to bartender a, a newer bar in San Jose, and then, uh, yeah, my roots have pretty much been sewn around here. I live pretty much settled in San Jose for the time being for the last awesome. years. And how did you link with Primal Canine? Me and Mike have passed like paths years ago when he was a promoter at the bar that I bartended in before I actually lived here. Ah. So I've poured drinks for the people that I've met in the Primal world. So when we've had parties and those people have turned up, I'm like, yo, you're that dude. <laughs> Like years and years and years ago, so oh, like we've so kind lovely. of had like a meandering relationship, I guess. I L- love that. What was the name of the bar? Uh, Fahrenheit. It was called. Cool. It, it was an ultra lounge, whatever that was at the time. I don't really know, but yeah, they did bottle service and they did fly, fire flare. And at the time, they 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 did a flare Friday, so it was the the third Friday of the month. They had a <laughs> bartender come in and I was living in Vegas at the time and they flew me down there I did like two days worth and she got drunk a lot and then I went, <laughs> I went back the next month because my buddy didn't want to go and they ended up staying for a week then I went oh. home and then I got a phone call like two months later saying hey Lee do you want a job I'm like yes and I got on a plane like a few days later and when I started bartending in at that bar spent three months there realized that I had to leave Two days later, I flew to Australia. Yeah, I just went to Australia. I just did the thing in Australia for a little bit. Then I found out about Vegas. Um, flew home for a week. Flew to Vegas to do the interviews. Flew back home for like two months. In that period, I went somewhere else. Greece. Somewhere else. A little. That might take me a while to remember. Like, why would you? Um, <laughs> And then Vegas in September of 2010 to start the bar. We did that for about a year-ish. Then we're back up to the bit I just mentioned. We went to California nine, ten years ago. Very nice. Fahrenheit for the win. And yeah. uh, love that you're a, a big like traveler. In the small town of San Jose, yeah. I mean, I did my traveling early. Lucky enough to found a hobby that turned into a like a skill that turned into competition that turned into a job that turned into a career that turned into a lifestyle and I didn't really work very hard for a long time just doing something I enjoyed that's kind of what it is for the dogs very nice um so what is your favorite thing to teach or train your dogs just engagement in general because that's like a massive con- I mean, broad statement you know what I mean getting to the dogs engaged with you mm-hmm. is the you shouldn't really want to engage with a dog that doesn't want to engage with you. But do you have a favorite thing to teach? Like, okay, orbit, for like, instance. Like, like a behavior? Yeah. Like, place is a good one because you can send your dog away from it. It's a really mm-hmm. in, independent behavior to send your dog away from you to get a reward. Most of the time we train to come get a reward from our hands, right? Sending your dog away, that's kind of fulfilling. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I taught my dog to go you know, to a place 30 yards away. I mean that's pretty cool right and get rewarded back there um yeah it really depends on the dog really really does because if they're fun it don't matter what i'm teaching them it really Mm -hmm. makes no difference can you talk to me about the hold command before we go into it Uh, what's the important i'm like i'm like super new to the hold command i've only learned it with mercy really but you start i started shaping it so what i did was just hold i mean your dog has to be kind of operant already to kind of understand that you just put something out there and they go what have i got to do to fucking find it right Mm -hmm. if you just do it and they just go well you're not doing anything for me they'll trot off so you have to make your dog a little bit operant to kind of make them understand that there's consequences out there for them and then just have a clicker sit down 
hold your hold your PVC pipe out. If she looks at it, you click and you feed, and start mm -hmm. there. Chances are they'll go from a look to a, maybe a nose boop to a boopy to a keeping your nose on it to then you asking more and more and more and more and more to their teeth are on it. And then, <laughs> and then once you get it to the back of their mouth and they're holding down, you can start shaping the different behaviors and start proofing the fact that they're holding it. Um, and then if you like, you can add the negative reinforcement, which essentially just you're yanking on the leash to make sure she keeps her mouth shut. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, all the quadrant stuff, like the cla you know, the describing of it, you, you, without getting about pulling on the leash to make sure your dog keeps her mouth shut, you let go, of the leash, you release her out. But if she gets chobbly, pressure comes on. Okay. People talk about it in different ways. I don't know, like clouding it, essentially pulling on the leash to make sure it keeps her mouth shut. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. We'll try that. What's the um, best, coolest thing you've had Mercy hold? Uh. I mean, I don't know about coolest, but like the hardest things are the heavier things. The metal, hard, metal, metal, heavier things are definitely hard. Um, in PSA, there's like 13 different things that she's going to be eventually be able to pick up. Um, T-shirt took her a little bit. Cause it's all flappy. Mm -hmm. um, a leash is another hard one for her because she's not. I've never reinforced her grabbing a leash. So to her, she's just, she just spits it out. So I've got to work that negative reinforcement of under her understanding of pressure comes on, keep your mouth shut, and release. Yay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, one person asked, um, any tips to um, get my dog to stop biting the leash? Uh, redirection for right now. I mean, I, I can't really describe what the dog's doing. Like, who knows? Why is it aroused? Why is it biting the leash? Have you, is it, have you, give, it, have you give it anything else to do? Can you put a piece of food in front of a dog's nose and just lure it away from the leash? If you can, just string a few pieces together. Good girl, good girl, good job, good job. Just string it away. And then eventually you can start dangling the leash and start reinforcing, screw the leash, here's your food. Good job, good job, sit. Good job, good job, break, yay, sit. Dangle leash, good job, screw the leash. Good job, good job, break. Okay, that was for uh, one hot mess who asked that. One hot mess? <laughs> one hot mess. <laughs> I think that they have a Malinois of 13 weeks. Um, okay. I mean, oh, uh, that's the question right that should have what question i should have asked it's a 13 week old malinois yes good luck let it do it <laughs> a 13 week old malinois they got a malinois they have to understand what they got it's going to keep biting that shit for a long time okay. so you redirect it with a hug because get a trainer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay another question was um my dog loves uh, um wants to bite uh we don't want her to bite other people, uh, but we want her to do protection sports. What should we do? I mean, that's a trainer perspective, right? Like inhibiting bite stuff. If you want to do bite sports, it's a, you know, a balance. Um, I mean, when Mercy was up to the age of like eight months, Mercy bit anybody. I mean, the chances are I told them if they come near me, I'm like, if she nips you, it's your own fault. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't, like, I just yeah. stop with everybody, right? That's mm -hmm. the manager. Stop the dog trying to get to bite other people. Mm -hmm. Redirect it with a tug, so you've actually got the thing that you're working with to kind of say, "Hey, bite this instead of the person," and then do the kind of exercises that we explained about with the leash. Mm -hmm. The train. Keep the way people trying to bite them, and redirect if it's really about bite work. Figure out what the goals are. Just, uh, mm -hmm. That dog is reactive. Bite work with a reactive dog is. Mm -hmm. idea. So, so one thing um, that I have learned, like um, we, we've been conditioning Rika from the start not to bite. Um, and like when she's like, I've had my little cousin come and, and play with Rika and I just am very flat out. Like I'll say Rika bites and because people st still will like play and all of that. But if you are kind of like, right, the dog bites. You're engaged invoking it it's gonna happen you know mm -hmm. what i mean ideally when you're playing with the kids like we don't really want to kind of let other people know she bites and then continue to kind of let them play with it again it's to try and make a better decision if like it's not going to be like a, a protect like not to say protection but like do any kind of bite sports i'd probably extinguish that behavior as much as you can really it's not, not anything that's going to get her any kind of mm -hmm. 
So I should have rephrased it. My little cousin is 13 years old and she doesn't listen. Like we've told her, don't go play with Tito. Oh, okay. And we see her like in the other room playing with Tito. Tito's like underneath the, a bed hiding from her. <laughs> and she's oh, like, yeah. <laughs> That's tough ones for the kids, man. Like you're on your own with that one. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, Justice NYC, what if the dog is not food motivated? Will it die? If you don't feed it, <laughs> it ain't, ain't going to die. <laughs> like, just, you might be asking, to, and you, the, the, the environment that you might be feeding in might be too high. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like, will it, will it, I mean, an animal, it's food motivated, dent. I'm not saying starve your dog, but it's associated. It obviously, gets fed a couple of times a day. So maybe, maybe use those times to make it do a little bit of work for you. Start there. Okay. All right. ACT Canine Services. Um, purely positive owner doesn't like to correct dog. How do you explain the importance of correcting a dog? without knowing what kind of relationship and communication style that trainer has with that person. Yeah, it's tough because it's moral based. You know what I mean? They don't want to add an aversive into their dog's life to balance it up. But chances are they probably correct their kids in a way. Mm -hmm. Right. A correction just should be educational. Try and get them off the mindset of adding an aversive or a correction or or a punishment is actually a start the communication if they balance lifestyle. But let them know what results you can get with positive reinforcement. And this is the, the techniques that we'll use. We only want to use positive reinforcement. It's okay. It's their dog, you just do what they want. But at a certain point you're gonna say it's not going to work here. Let's get away from it because the dog can be over threshold. I'm not sure what issues they're working on. If it's reactivity, it, I'm hoping that the trainer understands the dog's threshold really well. Mm -hmm. They're over threshold. Yeah. And honestly, if the dog owner um, d doesn't want to uh, listen to the trainer and thinks that they know more than the trainer, um, then like mm -hmm. it's probably not going to work out anyway. You know, like the owner is going to the trainer for expert advice. Um, and if the trouble is, cause there's so many like, like varied systems within the dog training world that people do get results with positive reinforcement only without, well, when I say only, you know, it's still negative reinforcement and using some kind of positive punishment with the leash in some way, fashion or form. They just don't understand the, the full scope of it all to, mm -hmm understand that it can be balanced and be better for your dog. I mean, if they don't want to listen to the professional, mm -hmm. this is the results you'll get. No problem. That's what it is. Just don't blame me when you don't get the results that you want. Okay. Good answer. All right. Boomerang the shark dog. Do you believe in dog adolescent phases or do you think it's just a slacking owner? Uh, probably a bit of both. Um, I definitely don't think dogs go through like a pubescent stage of like maybe testing their boundaries a little bit more as they get older and figure out some things that they used to get up like they never used to get away with or it's been a little bit more lax on and then testing their boundaries a little bit more but it's also because we stop feeding that dog. So mm -hmm. teach them to say we teach them to sit with food and then as soon as we think we know it we stop paying them and they get up and then we say sit again and then we maybe pay them and then sit becomes confusing so now sit isn't as clear as it was before. And them getting older, more freedom. Mm -hmm. So a little bit of both. Okay. All right, go, go, the Maligator. Um, building focus outside of the house for a slow maturing Mal. Uh, understand your three Ds. Distance, distraction, duration. Not asking too much, not asking too much of regard. It's like low criteria stuff. Will your dog engage with you just to walk off? quick little feed back into walking somewhere else just simple Wait. yeah just like sorry. sorry i'm cutting you off no, what no, are I'm the three d's a little bit shitty then sorry what are the three d's distance distraction and duration distance distraction duration yep so when you're working one of those d's uh typically the other d's are going to 
lower. Now, distance and duration kind of go hand in hand, but distractions, your dog's under distractions just walking out the door. So if you ask for sit and you walk away, you're adding all three of them by distance, distraction, and duration all at once, and your dog's probably going to fail. And you won't know why, because you added all three of those criteria at once. If you're working duration, work duration. Stand right in front of your dog and reward it consistently without you moving. We're just working duration. I'm going to keep, keep you here for 30 seconds. Good job, girl. Yay. You do, keep doing it. Keep doing it. Yay. Break. If you want to work distance, you're walking away quickly and walking back and rewarding your dog in place, showing her that I can go back and I can come back to you. Can go back. Can go good. Can come back to you. And then adding more distance and understanding your dog's thresholds, but then distraction. One of them as well. If your dog's already under distraction, you can't really work distance and duration because your dog's already in a distracted environment. Mm-hmm. For a car park, right, for uh, for sessions. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, what are the first things that you teach a young puppy? A what it was the first things I teach a, a young a young puppy? Um, I mean, getting based on the puppy and what they're doing. I mean, crate training is a big one. Understanding that the crate is a positive thing in their life. You know what I mean? Go in there, get some food, come back out. Yay! Go back in, like just multiple sessions, understanding that. Um, simple bits of like luring, letting the dog understand that if it pushes your hand, it can actually get the food and following it. I mean, steering your dog. I mean, there's so many things that you teach them to start with, but it all kind of happens in a fluid way. The better they get, the more you teach them. But Hand luring is probably the, one of the first ones. Follow my hand, you get paid. Okay, great. Um, aw, Cardi Billy. Lee is Cardi Billy. <laughs> um, the original okay. bastard boy. Okay. Um, how do you plan training sessions? Do you work one skill per session or multiple in same session? Gemini split. Something I'm getting better at uh, by trying to plan my bite work sessions beforehand. Um, I've been I've taught a couple of little clubs that do things really well, and they talk through their sessions beforehand to see where this is going to go. This is how it's going to go. This is what we'd like here. This is what the progression we'd like here, and you just kind of flow through your your sessions, so to speak, and you can kind of analyze them a lot easier. Typically, I don't really know what I'm going to work with Mercy when I do it. If I'm in a room, like you've seen me, like you've posted some of those videos, I didn't know what I was doing before I did it. I just kind of freestyling with her. Um, I think I've got to learn a little bit more of the theory to help us out, really, to help us both out, because it helps us calm down a little bit to know what we're working to then at the end of the session to go, okay, what did we learn? Um, I mean, my dog can spin around me. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like... When I'm starting to add a little bit more structure into a life with the PSA stuff, with retrieves and send aways and jump over things and go through tunnels and do that with a decoy rattling around her, like, mm-hmm. big shit. You know, you remember where you were the last time and a couple of people down south do it really well. Mm-hmm. Um, that brings us to the next question. Um, what are your goals for Mercy and, and uh, what sport do you do? Can you talk a little yeah. bit about her? The time anything she wants to do that she enjoys i'll let her do it like the dock the dock diving she loves that stuff the barn hunt just recently she's done that twice and she's already a fiend at it just trying to bite the rats out of the tube uh <laughs> ideally like a psa three title you know we've got some time to work on it but even if i know you wouldn't get there it doesn't matter really okay. it's just a journey to get to somewhere and you know i don't really care that much don't reach that destination nice but Mm -hmm. you guys have a really really beautiful bond (laughs) i mean she's i think without her i mean same as everybody else you know what i mean they go through torment they go through tormented times and all that kind of bs with life and your dog helps you through it and probably talk to your dog more than really should we communicate all the time but she was there for me and hopefully i can be there for her Mm -hmm. Um, why the name Mercy? She was a gift. Ah. So that's why she's an I with a name. Mercy's thank you in French. So she was actually named after um, another Mercy that unfortunately passed away. He was a primal Malinois. Um, and yeah, a little unfortunate accident. And uh, yeah, he passed away. And he was Mercy with an Y. And he was a beast. And she was the only one in her litter that came out born or the rest of her litter are brindle so she's you know ozzy and lucy and 
uh, Gary and Seven, all the rest of them are Brindle. She was the only one that looks like a Malinois. Hmm. So, but in fact, she was born on the same day as Ozzy, Erin's dog. All the, ah. rest of, all the rest of them were born the day after. Huh. Interesting. So, yeah, that's why she, she was a gift. Oh, that's sweet. Question on um, like the duchies versus the Malinois. Can you kind of talk about the difference between them and like the... Um, nah, like it's like up here for me as well. Like, because if, Mercy, if Mercy's mom was in Holland and she dropped the litter that she did, Mercy would be known as a Malinois. That's it. But here, yeah. she's because her parents are Dutch. Both mm -hmm. of her parents. So great, her, no, her grandfather was a Malinois, but it's K and PV lines. They've all got Mal, Dutch, Mal, Dutch in them all the way back. So you don't know the genes. Genetics is a crazy thing. Mm -hmm. So, essentially, from what I what from what I see from a Dutch, Dutchies are typically a little bit bigger in the head. They're a little bit. I mean, I'm kind of talking now because I've met thinking about it. I've met a couple of Dutchies that have thin faces. Yeah, it's tough. They're both amazing breeds. Like workers, energetic, athletic. Just one of them has stripes. Okay, another question. Could you talk about how you use the e collar? Um, so, with the primal system, we use it to, as a proofing tool. So it's paired with a correctional word. So when every time she hears me say no, she feels the e-collar. So if I'm asking her to do something and I correct her, she knows what I'm asking her to do. It's paired with leash pressure, so she knows what the leash pressure is. So it's not just feet. Um, yeah, it's about. But you do, do the um, leash pressure with the e-collar. Essentially, it's at the same time. I'll give the dog confusion where the e-collar mm -hmm. um, We don't really use the e-collar as a way to make the dog think that the environment is changing for it to change its behavior. Like um, the Nepo post stuff, I admire them, like all the trainers that can do it. Um, I just don't know enough about that training system to mm -hmm. see it work. The only thing that I've dealt with in regards to that system is the fallout of dogs that have been trained with that system that are now massively <laughs> conditioned to e-collar, that they need ridiculously high numbers to even get their attention. It feels like the world into them because they're used to it, like place, stim, 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 stim. Okay, when we start making place, when, when we take the placement board somewhere else and there's more stimulus, does five stim, 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 stim work anymore? Okay, no, but 10 does. Where do you stop? At what point is it aversive? Like, I just don't understand really it massively to really delve into doing it with my own dog. I think people hide the word stim and correction. A stim is just a low level correction to motivate your dog. Mm -hmm. I can't really see the difference in it. And some of the people that have had like training in it, I've asked them some of these questions. Sometimes they don't have answers. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, what did the dog think then? Like, what, what, did, what were you trying to convey with that stimming at the time compared to the higher level of correction? And they can't answer me. And that's mm -hmm. what makes me question it. Like, if you don't know why you're doing it, I can't do it with my own dog. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes, definitely. But that system, it produces amazing results with the right dogs, I think. The talented people that use that system blows me away. More jealous I do it. Okay. All right. Um, thank you for that. All right. My puppy is testing the handler and being an ass asshole. Tips to tone this down. Fashion thing. Is it being an asshole or has it just been a puppy? Uh, I think the puppy's like maybe like six months now. Yeah, I mean, people are assuming what they think is an asshole. Like, you would have thought my dog was a fucking asshole, <laughs> right? Because she was running all over the place. Like, what, what I think is an asshole, or maybe what you think is an asshole. Like, you prefer your, they prefer their dog to walk nicely in the heel. It's a six month old puppy. You got to train it to do that. It's been an asshole. Give it something better to do. Being an mm -hmm. asshole. To 
kind of value uh, trying to bite you oh i think um his um asshole behavior is in regards to food aggression so we control the resources where's the aggression coming from is the aggression coming from the bowl that is we're trying to give it like make, control that resource from it so it's not aggressive it's trying to bite your hand off with your hand in your food like when you're hold, holding food maybe that maybe what they're talking about maybe you're aggressively taking food from them i mean the more this is as soon as you start wording this you, the word aggression trainer trainer yeah you know what I mean? like because who mm -hmm. knows so yeah, correct it. Uh, or, or how? I don't know. <laughs> I have no clue. I don't know your dog or your or the person or their relationship. Mm -hmm. Okay, Dakota Belgian Malinois. My puppy is terrified of other dogs. Help! How can I socialize my puppy in a positive way? So socializing doesn't mean interacting with other dogs. Socializing just means being social in a social way while you're being social. All right. So understand thresholds. The three Ds. And uh, work towards maybe the fence line of a dog park. Like figure out where your dog could take food. Will it take food if most of the dog parks there? Will it take food with the car? Go in a different direction. I mean, start reinforcing a better a better response and create a positive experience around dogs. We don't give a shit about dogs. I wouldn't let other dogs interact with your fearful dog to either make it worse. Or or do that the dogs don't necessarily correct to the dogs very well. Okay. Um, for call offs and protection, how do you start training them? From Marlo Elizabeth. Call offs and protection. Um, start on the tie back, I, I would probably, and work it in an obedient way first that you can agitate your dog and get them agitated, down them, and then call off onto a tug, or do redirects if your dog can already. Um, already is on a suit, you know what I mean, or whatever they're on. I mean, essentially, it could work with the sleeve as well. Um, just do redirects. You recall off one sleeve into heel, send to other, send to other um, sleeve in front of you, and then work it back into the heel and come and reward in the heel. Okay. Thank I think you. that's calling off something. Um, yeah. High value. Okay. Uh, from Cardi Billy, is Mercy a champion Frisbee player yet? Is, is Mercy a champion what player yet? Frisbee player yet. I've stopped playing Frisbee with her a little bit. I get stressed out seeing her fucking jump through the air and land shitty. Like, it stresses me out because she's not the best at catching. I never really taught her to catch that well. Like, I was always like, oh, let's see how far I could throw it. And, yeah, again, I rush stuff, thinking, oh, she can do this, when really I should have taught her more rollers, teaching her to pick it up off the ground, and then teaching her like to come and get it closer to me so she can target a little bit better. Mm -hmm. So yes and no, she loves the Frisbees, but I'm not so sure about the champion. <laughs> I love the honesty. <laughs> yeah, she pops more times than catches it. <laughs> like, just pings it. She just pings it into the further out. It, which it's surprising because she can hold all those different things in her mouth, but with the catching which, away from her, she's still learning to judge, and you'd have to teach them how to like here it is to jump. Then, like, some dogs can get it pretty quickly. I was just amazed she was getting it the way she did, and I never really I should spend more time on it to make it a little bit more consistent. Okay, Andy Lopez dog training. What's Mercy's favorite treat? And bonus, what's your favorite food? Uh, Andy Lopez? Yes. I like that dude. Um, what's Mercy's favorite treat? Um, I don't really change her treats up. I only really make her work for her food, a kibble. So it's a kibble that she predominantly works for throughout the day. Um, I use Happy Howies for her treats. If it's like, if I'm doing nose work with her, I'm kind of implementing that kind of stuff. Um, it's super high value, it's Happy Howies. We do have some other like natural treats, like duck heads and like nasty shit that smells real bad. <laughs> um, that I used to like have a hold a little bit. Um, yeah, she needs anything. Like she really's not. She ain't bothered. She's good um, with most of her foods. And for me, I know Andy wants me to say Sour Patch Kids. <laughs> um, I didn't. Um, what would I say my favorite food was? I'm a big fan of Three Musketeers bars right now. 
that's why my, my brain goes to Candy just because thinking about Andy because he was we, we spoke about oh, really dark. I'm sorry, I should have, I should have paid more attention to that. Uh, yeah, I don't think he, I don't think he does candy anymore. He used to uh, he used to message me all the time, and when I used to have this out, I'd candy out. And he, yeah, he says, "You know me, Bill." Yeah, there you go. Like, <laughs> like yeah, he, I think some of the ones like we'd have a, like a ranking system of like, nah, bro, these ones are good, and the berry ones would overtake. And then I tr I tried these cinnamon nasty fire ones once, and I nearly threw up. They were gross, and he just laughed at me. <laughs> he said, "Right or left Twix." Oh, sometimes <laughs> I don't even bother, man. I'll just munch them both. <laughs> so funny. Yeah, I like, um, I like my, my chocolate and candy. Did you did you like that London Hogwarts candy? How, how I haven't tried it, it yet. I will do, though. I'll sit down and, uh, and appreciate it. Like, I'm not sure what kind of chocolate it is. Dark chocolate, I don't eat much of. But milk chocolate, I like. It's your thing. Question, is Mercy Spade? No, but I probably have to spay her soon. Unfortunately, she's uh, she has some like hormone imbalances, I think, where she and she went through a couple of fake pregnancies, and then one of her nipples got mastitis. So we had to kind of worry about that. I think essentially it just means her nipple was clogged, yeah, mm -hmm. and the milk can it can go sour or you know get infected. It didn't, but we got her on the meds to kind of dry it up, um, and it happened again. So I have to kind of make the decision to potentially stop all those hormones happening to make it easier on her body as she's got older. The, mm -hmm. the spain's put more, or the heat cycles put more pressure on her body, I think. But a little bit more lethargic mm -hmm. as she got older. So, yeah, it's about time, I think. Mm -hmm. And did you just um, wait, you know, because three years is kind of like in like American standards, like a little bit on the late side. I mean, you know, only by what we're told on the internet, right? Right, in my opinion, like people spay their dogs and neuter them way too early, thinking it changes behaviour. Right, if she's because one of her nipples is like you know having that problem, she probably does have a higher risk of having problems with that. So that's why I'm going to spay. But if there was no problems, like I don't want to be forced into it, really. You know, like mm -hmm. I mean, two minds. Like if I have, if she was a dude, wouldn't care really. Mm -hmm. Not gonna be a whoopsie litter because I would manage my dog accordingly. Mm -hmm. uh, there's not going to be any, like anything happen like that. The only thing that I would ever question is maybe spaying a, a male for eventually because he's marking. Mm -hmm. Other than that, yeah, pretty much gonna keep most of my dogs intact. I think. Do you have any clients that come to you? Um, uh, any any dogs that were um, spayed and then now they're having behavior problems? I mean, I wouldn't really say that spaying or neutering causes behavioural problems, but it probably stunts them a little bit without the dog being able to mature. Definitely, if you look at some pictures of the same litter mates of dogs that some have been spayed, some haven't or neutered, and they develop differently. They don't develop as full. I mean, because of that, we can see it. You've got to think there's some mental stuff going on as well that we'd like to make sure that they get fully mature with before we start thinking about cutting off their bits mm -hmm. to make better about management. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of vets recommend getting their, uh, getting the dog spayed before the first heat and Rika after her heat in uh, late December, oh my gosh, she has grown so much. Yeah. Like yeah. it's like she's a real Amazing. adult dog, yeah. Fill out um, right? without that, like they don't. Sometimes they just don't fill out, and they they still look skinny beings that still in that like puppy, lanky, weird looking stage of like you didn't grow fully. Like where's mm -hmm. the rest of? The birds? I mean, but vets are out there. Think of the health of your dog. I never want to discount. Like I'm not a vet. I don't know the on why I definitely should. But there's so much information out there that tells me I should and tells me I shouldn't. I'm just going to go with what works for my dog. You know, right. Vets want to keep, keep your dog healthy so they don't see him again. They don't think about the mental state of their dogs. Vets aren't trainers. Mm -hmm. That's true. 
Would you ever get another dog while you still have Mercy? And if so, what breed? Yep, definitely would. Um, who knows? Probably, I'd probably think it'd, it'd be another dog. Bye. Oh, I think so much like a chili. Oh, there we go. Um, I think I always joke You're about fine. getting like a small bitey dog, just to like send that little dog on the person's ankles, and then Mercy can come in and fly on <laughs> over the top. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? This little dog. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Yeah, little dog. But I mean, maybe a bull terrier. Or an American Pitbull Terrier, like a real one. But chances are that those dogs aren't going to be, uh, like, dog-friendly. Like, mm -hmm. that's real from those dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, someone asked, when are you getting a Frenchie? I know, right? I've had them loads. Like, Mercy seems to like the Frenchies. Uh, yeah, I don't think for a while, man. <laughs> like, they're awesome, but they're awesome to give back. <laughs> Um, let's see. Uh, it got dark. Thoughts, um, thoughts on age of dog learning protection work. If dog has a slight overbite, can she still do it? Oh, that's a trainer one, really. That's really down to the how good your trainer is to see what kind of bite mechanics your dog has tendencies for uh, and trying to make sure your dog stays safe. You know, I think, I think the term protective, protection, just gets swung around. Like, just because you're biting something just means protective. Um, see whether your dog likes to it, likes to bite something and, and go from mm -hmm. there. But really, that's a trainer one. Start worrying about okay. you know, the difference in the bites. Okay. What would you say to someone who is interested in getting a Mal Duchy for their first dog? Um... Who are they yeah, getting to train them? Smart. Um, can a personal, can a PP not, when dog... I, when I say dog, them, I mean the, the handler, not the dog. Right. Yes. <laughs> I got yeah. it. Right. Unless you want to um, train, train's an option, obviously. I mean, you can get the dog trained and send it away. But ideally, I meant for what, who's training the handler to learn how to communicate with that type of dog. Mm-hmm. Um, can a personal protection dog also be a personal, um, be a PSA dog? Wait, can a PP dog, a personal protection dog, also be a PSA dog? That's essentially what they are. And sometimes not. So a PSA dog can be a personal protection dog. But chances are a personal protection dog is a PSA dog. Just haven't had the, maybe the levels of control. Because there's some crazy things that PSA does. That's probably not applicable to real personal protection. So if your dog bites stuff yeah. and you have control over it, like you should do with a personal protection dog, you should be able to heal on the field, do a couple of turns, a couple of figure of eights. Yay, you're done. And then do the bite scenarios where your dog bites somebody in a car. Sweet. You heal away. You bite another person and then you send the person of another decoy down the field. Chances are a personal protection dog has seen all of those scenarios. If it hasn't, what kind of personal protection dog is it? Right. True. Um, how, all right. How do you build this in amazing engage, engagement and relationship between you and Mercy? Great training. Making it work for a food. Finding what's valuable. Short sessions. Keeping them fun. Genetics. Can you talk a little bit about um, the barn hunting experience? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, essentially, you just uh, bring them in, open the door. There's a load of hay bales. She didn't know there was a rat to begin with. We just kind of just let her figure it out. When she started to kind of sniff at something, I kind of just buried it even more. And then... I just let her kind of nip at it a little bit. I picked it up. I give it to the other dude. Told her, got direct her into another area, and she did it again. Like, genetically, she just did it. I think with a lot of other dogs, you'd have to, like, spend a lot more time on, hey, it's this thing you're supposed to get. Hey, it's the rat. But there's lots of tears to it. I think the craziest level is it. I think it's called Crazy 8. They have to find eight rats in two minutes yeah. and do at least one tunnel and climb over at least one hay bale. 
right? That's pretty gnarly. But like the, the the set of rules for the dogs is like this big. The set of rules for the handler is like this big. There's so many things that you can't do as a handler to compete well. So just another sport to figure out the rules and do good at, hopefully. Very cool. Um, okay. The last question, because we're hitting an hour and it's dark out. I can't even see. You, yeah, I mean, if I, go over, if I go over here, I mean, I'm still, I'm still locked out. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that better? Shane, we can see your face now. There you go. At least you, can, at least you can see my face. I mean, here's a cold, so this is going up. But there you go. I'm sorry. It's not working best. <laughs> okay. Um, what is, uh, what do you get out of dog training and what have you learned about yourself through dog training? It's an escape. Being in front of a dog, the shit that might matter doesn't at all. You know what I mean? You escape to <laughs> your dog. If you engage with your dog and they're looking at you, the bills that you might have to pay or whatever else is bothering you, you can just get your dog out. And if you can't, let it not. If you still, it's still inside of you and you can't like get rid of it, put your dog in a crate, take a deep breath take it off and your dog will come out and do the exact same thing that you want it to do and look at you and you can look at your dog and you go, ah, oh, yeah, hey, and that's, I'm lucky enough to get to do it with other people's dogs and, you know, value that. It's pretty, yeah. It sounds really cliche and cheesy, but it's a pretty, it's an escaping thing, you know? And I guess as far as what I've learned about myself, it's a way to control emotion because they don't talk with emotion. If you're emotional, you're correcting or talking to your dog, Chances are something else is pissing you off. Mm -hmm. Pretty powerful. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I love I mean, that. It, yeah. Not easy to do, but you know, mm -hmm. you'll try to do it every day. Really love that answer, and I apologize for uh, for kind you're getting, of you're getting well there. Do you see Kate? What you're getting Katie's all well off, love? <laughs> <laughs> That that in combination with freaking KD Matthews comment. What did he say? <laughs> I can't read any of the text. I, I don't. I don't see any of the. Uh, what did he say? He said, "Good lord, go back in the dark." <laughs> oh, what a wanker! Dude, he ain't, he, ain't exa he ain't exactly a portrait either, though, so we can't really talk. But I mean, how about if I just go? Let's see, you see one side. There you go. You no, no, go fully in the dark. He's whoa, just whoa. being. He's being a, a, yeah, a, I know. I mean, I know Katie. He's a. Uh, He's got a mouth on him. He's got the he's got the gift of the gab, that lad. Like he can talk. Like he just I don't even know what he's saying most of the time. Like Yeah, I believe you. Yes. Doing it. Oh man. <laughs> Love it. Um, do you put any product in your beard? Um I have some beard oil, but only because I saw it walking down the aisle in Walmart. Like I, I was like, I get it a sniff, I was like, oh that smells good. <laughs> I'm, try I'm trying to be better with it because it looks like it looks very shabby right now. You can see where I've had a mask on. Oh, <laughs> it's sticking out like I that. I don't really. Um, and also, are are you kickboxing? My kickboxing? Yeah. Someone asked asked if you kickbox. Nah. No. Not kickboxing. Mm -hmm. uh, I've done like martial arts in some way, shape, or form a few times over my life. Um, I was more into like ball sports, football, like. English football, like real football, not American one, like the kicking one. Um, yeah, no real martial arts, really. Mm -hmm. I think so. You have a buddy, a Rouge, um, from the 0121. Oh, the 0121, but that's uh, that's Birmingham, that is like if <laughs> I can't think about that in a long time. 0121, <laughs> yeah, that brings back some memories. Who, who said that? A Rouge. Yes, Arouge. how is it living from the 0121 uh, uh, to Cali? What's the Arouge. difference? 0121, like, that's the area code for Birmingham. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, he, he had a lot of good questions. He also asked, do American girls swoon over your 0121 accent? Nah, and I'm glad they don't. <laughs> like, it, it used to bother me. As I'm getting older, probably I'll probably use it a little bit more than I should do. But uh, before, if you mentioned my accent, and I was single, and you mentioned it within the first few minutes of meeting me. I was like, no, done. <laughs> <laughs> like, because they just sound different. Mm -hmm. Kicks Corner just at Birmingham stand up. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 
love it. Um, and okay, and the the actual final last question. Um, if you are, and you're, you're gonna hate this question. <laughs> it's about the healing and, and the head. Okay. Um, like where I am right now with Rika, uh, like her head's kind of looking at, at me sideways. And I, I really want to get, my goal it's is up. to get a nice yeah. focus yeah. feel. Like a Kuma, right? Okay. I mean, Mercy does it. You guys are the uh, same. I mean, there's, there's levels to this shit. Well, right, the, the focused healing, there's lots of levels to it. Well, okay, this is that's but that's like you're then now you're comparing to um, like Mercy. Oh, I mean, you got to put like a Kuma as like the, the like I won't say epitome, but like he does it structurally perfect, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Regardless of what he does with his feet, his head positions, chances are 99% of the time, bang on. And you can just tell that Jarrah's just worked and worked to make sure that the the hand placement or the reward placement placed precedent. I mean, sorry, his head, the head placement placed precedent over the reward. So you mm -hmm. just got, you don't got to understand that it's getting the reward from being in that position. So mm -hmm. if, if Riker's doing this kind of stuff, it tells me that you may be rewarding with spins or maybe rewarding out this side, mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah, I, I think my hand's here and she like looking up, well, also, I maybe well, you're talking about she's looking up towards your eyes. Yeah, she's like that. Oh, I mean, that's because you probably shaped the focal, like to give her the focal point towards your face. Because you've probably done some walking like this, right? And she's trying to find a focal point and look at your face. Yeah. So you got to teach a focal point. So what you can do is just like have your dog in a heel, like put the food here, and then bring it around. If their if their head stays facing up, you reward. Mm -hmm. And you just got to go back to some basics of doing it in a static way of make sure your dog understands statically what your heel position is. And now I'll revert to that position over your reward placement. Mm -hmm. And then it doesn't matter where your reward is because mm -hmm. your head position is where it needs to be. And it's reps and reps mm -hmm. and reps. When was the last time you did heal with a healing session? Earlier today. How before that? Um, yesterday <laughs> okay good enough okay good answers most people ask my clients and i'm like when you last time you were place and they're like if they pause they ain't worked in a while mm -hmm. well i think we're doing too much i think mm. <laughs> i don't know about too much okay I, I i like that i mean i i think because she's getting confused like i we did we're doing like the agility jumps and then the place and now you uh gave us that touch tip oh the touchpad yeah yeah like you just gotta like break break them up and clean clean them up individually to then quickly add them back into into your other sessions mm -hmm. you know figure out what you failed with and what you need to make better and make a mental note of it to try and work it the next time mm -hmm. um do you want to share the little um tip that you gave me with the touch i i feel like i what don't even want to get i don't and, even I, want okay to... like if it's a tip and it's no, honestly, I don't even want to give it away. I feel like it's such a great little... <laughs> what, what did I say? The index card. Oh, the post-it note. The post-it note, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, as much as me telling you that, I've probably heard it off somebody. I don't know who. I can't remember. But essentially to people, anybody that is watching, it should uh, use a post-it note to make your dog put their paws on so you can put the post-it note on different places to, like, turn light switches off and touch remote controls and essentially shaping behavior yeah okay. i mean that kind of stuff give away because even if they hear it they've still got to do the work <laughs> you know what i mean they've still <laughs> got to put the work in so if you're doing your touch and you're posting you know, look what i can do cool can you just well, <laughs> do about it but you still can do it mm. give away all the information you know what i mean mm. it's deep and it's like you know, they don't know what to do mm -hmm. yeah awesome oh the and the last bit Keep those um, those videos of you and Mercy coming, of you guys running around. Oh, God. I just, <laughs> that's what I mean about just freestyling out. Like, no clue that I end up running like a penguin around the training room. <laughs> those that's, videos are killing me. If <laughs> that stuff, I'm not rewarding the right things. She might, like, I might change a pace and I might not caught a right head position. Like, that kind of stuff is just for me. It's not helping her out. Like, 
it's fun to engage with her like that. And she's like, yeah, let's run around. But really, it's not helping the clarity of what I want to teach her of just maybe just walking smoothly, nicely next to a decoy clattering around. Because mm -hmm. all around a decoy and controlling a training room that's empty is two different things. Mm -hmm. I think you would score high, though, in a dog dancing competition. <laughs> <laughs> some, of those dog, some of those dog videos are insane. Like, yeah. insane. Like, I have to figure out how they even started to chain those behaviors together. And, yeah. It's I'm blown, blown away by a lot of those trainers that can get the animals to do that in such an, like, an eloquent way. Yeah. Totally. Pretty amazing. They don't... Yeah, don't amazing. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Bushank, for chatting and answering all these questions. No problem. I think most of the people answering the questions were people I know. What? Most of the people answering the questions were people I know. I mean, I think you got a lot of uh, mystery well, people. I didn't get to them. They can reach out. If they're, if they're genuine training questions, reach out. Uh, I'll try my best. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Have a good night. I hope that you get inside soon. Yeah, me too. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I appreciate you. And, uh, yeah, keep uh, keep all the YOLOs. I say thank you again for uh, all the stuff that you sent me. It was amazing. The, the tug she loves, super durable. The long line, it's amazing and well-timed. The chocolate I'm going to get to. Uh, and the little note was, uh, was a nice touch as well. Thank you very much. Our pleasure. Glad yeah. you found everything. Okay, see you. Bye-bye.